Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, There's Always Room For. My name is Kim and today I am reminding you once again that there's always room for dessert. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make strawberry shortcake. So I'm filming this video in June and typically I don't make cakes in the summer anymore because I've had my fair share of cake fails due to them melting in the heat. However, I am adapting Christina Tosi's method for wrapping the cake in acetate, which provides extra stability to the cake. And that's exactly what I need because I'll be driving this cake up over 200 miles in the middle of summer. I'm making this cake over the course of a few days to avoid scrambling to get everything done in one day. Here's how I broke it down. On Monday, I baked the cakes, wrapped them in plastic, and stuck them in the freezer. Last night, I sliced the strawberries, coated them in sugar, and put them in the fridge overnight to rest. Today is Friday and it's assembly day, so I'm taking my cake layers out of the freezer, I'm making my stabilized whipped cream, and assembling the cake. If you want to learn how to make my strawberry shortcake, follow along. Here's a list of ingredients you'll need to make the cake. Make sure all ingredients are at room temperature. Start by buttering and flouring your cake pan. I'm using a half sheet pan, which is 18 inches by 13 inches. Now is a good time to preheat your oven to 325 degrees. Line the pan with parchment paper. In a medium mixing bowl, whisk the eggs, oil, milk, and vanilla. In the bowl of a stand mixer, add your cake flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Using the whisk attachment, mix the dry ingredients together. Start adding chunks of butter, one to two tablespoons at a time. Continue until all the butter is incorporated and evenly distributed. The mixture should look like fluffy sand. Switch to the paddle attachment. Add one third of your liquid ingredients to the mixture. Beat on medium speed for two minutes, scraping down the bowl halfway. Add one half of the remaining liquid and mix until incorporated. Scrape down the bowl and add the remaining liquid. Mix until just incorporated. The batter should be smooth, light, and fluffy. Pour the batter into your prepared cake pan and spread out evenly using an offset spatula or the back of a spoon. Once the batter is leveled out, this cake will go into the oven at 325 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. The cake is done when the top is golden brown, it springs back when you touch it, and when an inserted toothpick comes out clean. When the cake is cooled, turn it out onto a clean surface. I use the sill pad for easier cleanup. Remove the parchment paper. Use your cake ring to cut two circles out of the cake. You'll be able to cut two full rounds from the cake, and the third round will be made up of the remaining pieces. If you're not using the cake right away, place the cake on a cake board, wrap with plastic wrap, insert into freezer bags or airtight containers, and freeze. Here I'm just using scraps of cake to fill the cake ring. For the strawberry filling, you will need two pounds of strawberries and one half cup of granulated sugar. The night before you assemble the cake, prepare your strawberries. Reserve a few for decoration. Then for the remaining strawberries, remove the tops, hull them removing the tough centers, and give them a rough chop.
Place the strawberries in a bowl and sprinkle one half cup of granulated sugar on them. Stir to coat evenly. Set this mixture in the refrigerator, covered, for at least four hours or overnight. Two to four hours before you assemble your cake, strain the strawberries from the liquid they produced. Be sure to reserve the liquid. Here are the ingredients you'll need to make the stabilized whipped cream frosting. I prefer frostings that are less sweet, so I stay on the lower end of the range when it comes to the sugar. To start the stabilized whipped cream frosting, sprinkle the gelatin over the cold water and let bloom for 10 minutes. Then microwave in 10 second intervals, stirring in between until the gelatin has dissolved completely. Add two tablespoons of heavy cream to the mixture, stirring in between. Add the vanilla. Here I'm using a strainer and pouring the mixture into the vanilla. The strainer helps ensure no clumps of gelatin will get into the whipped cream. Add the heavy cream to the bowl of a stand mixer and whip until you get soft peaks. Sift the confectioner's sugar into the heavy cream and mix until combined. Add the gelatin mixture and beat until you get stiff peaks. Now that all the components of the cake are done, it's time to start assembling. But before I get started on that, I wanna make sure I have all of my equipment ready. You're going to need a cake ring. I'm using an eight inch cake ring since I want my cake to be eight inches. You can also use a smaller one if you want a smaller cake. You'll need a board to place the cake on. I'm using a 10 inch acrylic cake disc, and I'm only using this because I know I will get this back in the end. If you are dropping the cake off or leaving it at a party, you'll wanna use something that's disposable and a cardboard cake circle will help out. You'll also need acetate. So acetate comes in a roll like this. I've ordered mine off of Amazon, and that's gonna be the support that helps you transport your cake and just build the cake very sturdily and place this inside the cake ring. If you don't have acetate or don't have access to it, I suspect that if you double up wax paper um, and are really gentle, you might be able to go ahead and use that. All right, so I'm going to get started. So the bottom layer of cake is gonna be the ugliest layer and that's the one that we kind of put together using scraps of cake. I'm actually gonna take it apart in pieces because by now the cake has thawed and softened. And if I try to flip this in, it's gonna make a big mess. So I'm just gonna take out pieces of this cake and fit it into the cake ring. So there's two big pieces. I'm just kind of pressing it in. I'm actually given my height, I don't need the cake pedestal, so I'm gonna remove it. Short people problems. Right. So to help keep your cake board in place, and if you don't have one of those non-stick grip mats, which I have, but I never can find it when I need it, I just use a wet paper towel and put it at the bottom. You can also use scratch tape if you're using cardboard. Cake is centered, it's in its place, and I'm just adding these extra chunks in the middle to fill in the gaps. So I'm gonna film the construction of this first layer at this angle, and then for the second layer and the third layer, I'm gonna go ahead and pan the camera over the cake so you can see the layers being built that way. So the next part of this cake is gonna be the syrup that the strawberries created. So I strained the strawberries this morning from the liquid that they created. And so now um, the strawberries won't seep liquid once they're in the whipped cream frosting. The liquid is actually all at the bottom of this bowl. And let's see if I can show you without making a mess. So 
So the first thing you wanna do is add the liquid into the cake. So this is like homemade strawberry syrup. It's the water from the strawberries plus some sugar, and it's gonna add some moisture back into the cake. So I'm gonna do a couple spoonfuls and just pour it into the cake as evenly as I can. So now it's time to add the whipped cream. And I know that there are three layers in the cake, but I'm gonna divide this amount of whipped cream into quarters, only because I want a little bit extra to decorate the top with. So I'm gonna split this whipped cream into quarters and add one quarter of this whipped cream mixture to the cake. Now that the first layer of cake is in, I'm gonna add the tape to the sides. Just wanna kind of seam down the line where the acetate meets. I'm actually going to divide this amount in half because there will not be the macerated strawberries on the top layer of cake. So there's really only two layers of these. You wanna be pretty generous and make sure that you're putting strawberries all the way to the edge so that you see them when you remove this cake ring. It's the contrast of color that's gonna make it look really cool. So my first layer is done. I'm gonna go ahead and pan the camera over my cake so you can see the rest. Here's where I decide that I wanna cut down my acetate. I originally thought the taller the better, but the extra height just got in my way. Christina Tosi recommends acetate that is three inches tall. Listen to her. Here I'm adding another piece of tape since I cut off the top of the acetate. So the cake is almost done. We just have to top it off with the remaining whipped cream. I'm gonna put some of the whipped cream into a pastry bag fitted with a star tip. Just snip off the end of the pastry bag. And place the star tip inside. This is a jumbo star tip. And then to help me put the whipped cream in the bag, I'm placing the bag inside a cup. I'm gonna take a third of the whipped cream and put it in my piping bag. And it's easier to pipe when this whipped cream is cold. So while I'm finishing off the top of this cake, I'm actually gonna put this in the fridge. Use the offset spatula and just distribute it evenly over the cake. And this is where I guess the cake pedestal will really help you. It's still not exactly necessary. So now I like to grab the spatula and clean it off. I scrape the frosting into a bowl to save it in case I need it later. And then I wipe the spatula clean with a paper towel. And then you see how it's kind of gone over the edge over here? I'm just going to scrape against to clean it off. So I'm going to scrape it along using the acetate as a guide clean off the edges. And then finally, I'm going to swoop over the edge to make a 
the cleanest edge possible towards the center. And this isn't necessary. It's a rustic looking cake to begin with. So it doesn't need to be completely smooth. I'm just gonna go around every side of this cake this way. What I'm going to do now is remove the cake ring because I'm not going to bring this with me. I'm going to lift up. And one thing I like to do with the tape is I like to fold a little tab over so that when I'm removing the tape, it's a lot easier to grab. So I'm removing the cake base. And the seam is here. So I'm just going to place the tape. So now there's tape in two places for extra security. And then we're able to see the cake. Finished product. So this is the cake. It's almost done. You can see the different layers. The strawberries, the whipped cream, and the cake. I'm going to pop this in the fridge before I pipe the final decorations on top. And I'll be back. I just remembered a tip that I wanted to share with you guys before you place the cake into the refrigerator and that's to grab an offset spatula or a butter knife and place it down on the shelf before you place the cake into the refrigerator. What you're trying to avoid is um, not being able to get the cake out of the fridge. So the cake base can lay pretty flush to the refrigerator shelf and it can be really hard to pick the cake up from any angle. You can't really grab at it. So to avoid this issue, if you place the spatula underneath the cake, like this, you can use a butter knife. And when it comes time to remove the cake from the fridge, you can use this to help you prop the cake up a little bit on an angle and slide your fingers underneath so you can grab the cake easily. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the fridge. I'll be right back. Okay, so the cake is chilled and I'm just gonna add some finishing touches to it. I'm gonna grab my piping bag and pipe a few star rounds on. And I'm going to place some of the strawberries that I have reserved strategically. I'm gonna pick a little bit more. Um, you can also use some cake crumbs, which um, I have reserved cake. So I'm just gonna crumble some of that and maybe put some on the edge. So you just wanna clean the crumbs off of your cake board and your cake is good to go. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial for strawberry shortcake. Thank you so much for following along. My name is Kim and don't forget there is always room for dessert. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.